So with those housekeeping details attended to, I want to acknowledge the OCLC Research Library Partnership, which both underwrites and inspires our work. Attendees from this webinar are from the OCLC RLP, and I want to thank you for your continued support and input into our work. These are both crucial to our success. We are also happy to welcome guests from the pilot project that we'll be discussing today. You two have been valued partners, and we want to thank you. Um, so I'm going to switch uh, slides here today. So I am thrilled to welcome our presenters here today, uh, John Chapman and Bruce Washburn from OCLC, along with Mark McGee and Stephen Hearn uh, from Harvard and Minnesota, respectively. And I am going to turn things over to John Chapman to kick things off. Uh, John? You have the presenter privileges. I'm taking you off of mute, and you can take it away. Great. Thanks, Marilee. Um, so first off, I've, I've been given just a few minutes to put this into some context. I wanted to say um, this project didn't happen in a vacuum. OCLC has been publishing linked data for many years. Um, the VF project uh, began publishing as linked data in 2009, uh, FAST in 2011. And then WorldCat.org, as many of you know, has been publishing references to WorldCat works and WorldCat persons for a few years in 2014. There's also been a very lively um, and longstanding relationship with the Wiki, Wiki asterisk community, uh, Wikidata, Wikipedia. Uh, beginning in 2012, there was a project, uh, the VOFBOT ad uh, references to VOF in Wikipedia. Um, that project expanded in 2015 with the addition of more and more links to uh, non-English Wikipedia. And uh, very recently in 2017, uh, Merrily Profit has been uh, involved with the site tool integration, uh, which gives uh, Wikipedia editors um, powerful tools that link into WorldCat. And uh, the Wikipedia and Libraries Better Together project um, is providing free online training for over 200 librarians who are looking to increase their Wikipedia skills and design Wikipedia-related training for their communities. Um, in terms of OCLC's community, uh, we've been working on some linked data-related uh, projects. Um, many of them have included uh, participants and attendees today. Um, so beginning in 2015, we worked with person entities and the lookup pilot on those. We also did a metadata refinery prototype, which looked at uh, tools to improve data going in on the content DM side. And uh, content DM has also leveraged IIIF uh, support in their product. And um, those those projects have been have been continuing, but especially those 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 first two, the, the entity lookup pilot and the metadata refinery, um, asked, kind of led us to ask this question about, you know, further than just looking at or searching on uh, resources that might be in VOF or that WorldCat might contain, how can we uh, leverage this participatory um, paradigm that the wiki community has in terms of um, enhancing and actually creating new descriptions for resources, persons, topics that libraries uh, might be interested in connecting with their, with their materials. So that was the context in which this linked data prototype project that we're going to talk about today uh, was created in. So we really looked at new ways of working together with our community on this one. Um, so we leveraged um, the uh, community center that OCLC runs. We used a listserv, which isn't new technology, but we were uh, working with those two together. Uh, we also had uh, constant um, office hours. So every week uh, we met with our community to discuss use cases, to talk about issues that they had run into, and we were able to rapidly iterate um, the design um, that we were able to provide on our software for our participants. And so that's going to be the bulk of uh, Bruce's presentation. Just to outline that, though, we did look at two main use cases. So the first one being reconciliation. So given text-based um, descriptions, uh, strings describing items, people, topics, could we connect those to specific entity descriptions? 
Uh, to do that, we created a Sparkle Endpoint, an Explorer UI, and then leveraged the uh, searching capabilities in Wikibase. And then, um, you know, near and dear to my heart, being from the cataloging application side of the house, um, very interested in looking at the editing interface. Um, so looking at the Wikibase UI for its capabilities in terms of uh, adding new descriptions, enhancing existing descriptions. And then um, one of the favorite tools, I think, nearly everybody that worked on the project, the Retriever, uh, which is something that um, Bruce will go into detail on as well. So really what we wanted to do here was collaborate with our library partners on their problem statements, uh, provide some tools to address those issues, and then uh, work with them on iterating those to more closely meet um, those use cases as they developed. So to step through a little bit more on the, um, on the design of the software, I'm going to hand it over to Bruce. Okay, thanks, John. And uh, John has nicely covered the sort of the why of this pilot project. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the what, um, what we built to um, allow the, the experiment to be carried out. We needed a system where people could do this kind of work of reconciliation and editing. And to give you a bit of a tour of how we built that system, I'm going to start with some disambiguation. The, the terms that we use kind of sound the same for a lot of the systems we'll be talking about. So just to, to back up a bit and, and uh, level set, Wikipedia is familiar to most as an as a encyclopedia, but Wikidata might not be as familiar. Um, designed to initially as a way to structure data that could be could power other media wiki or Wikimedia projects, including Wikipedia. And it's been around for, I guess, as of today, about today, six years. It started about six years ago, the end of October, six years ago, and has descriptions in it of various kinds of entities, people, places, events. Um, so it's entity oriented, uh, covering currently about 57 million different entities. A very powerful tool, it's just hugely important now, I think, in the web landscape. But the software that runs those two systems is important too. MediaWiki has been around for a long time of just free and open source wiki software, and that's what powers Wikipedia. Wikibase is an extension to a MediaWiki extension, and it sits essentially kind of inside or on top of the MediaWiki software, but it, it extends it in particular ways, uh, allowing you to structure data and store that in the system. Instead of MediaWiki, you can write an article, give it a title, tag it, et cetera. But in Wikibase, you can start to add other statements associated with your description um, to connect the dots, basically, to connect one entity to another. And that's a really powerful tool. Um, MediaWiki features, one of the things I should say, again, backing up a bit, is that we started this project and had about a nine-month runway. We had a lot to do, a lot to cover, and we didn't want to write any software if we could help it. And we're, the features of MediaWiki and Wikibase are very attractive from that point of view because you can just get started with so many of the capabilities that we wanted to have in a, in a system to manage linked data. This is a list of them here. I want to focus on a couple of things in this list. The discussion pages would be one uh, where you can basically talk about the data that you're working with. It's very community oriented. It just leans in the direction of conversation, argument, discussion, and agreement. And the multilingual user interface is important too. This kind of thing that you want to have in a system, sometimes it's left to the end. You try to bolt it on later. It's great to have it there from the start. And all those auto-suggest features were also important. So we'll take a look at those a little bit when we look at use cases and how we approach them. When you add Wikibase, that extension to MediaWiki, then you get some additional important superpowers in the software stack, the ability to generate linked data and Sparkle, which I'll talk about in a bit, a way to, instead of just searching across data using keyword searches or index searches, a Sparkle interface gives you a way to query 
as opposed to search to query the data using these logical constructions. It's incredibly powerful. If the data is, is, is in the system to support the queries, you can do all kinds of very interesting things with a Sparkle query and a structured data editor, which again, having a user interface to do this, not having to design that is a huge uh, advantage to get started quickly with a project like this. Wikibase has a lot of advantages on its own in addition to the ones we talked about for MediaWiki. I want to focus here again on two of the bullets that, that is so highly collaborative that humans and machines can interact with the data and it really wants people to participate, to, to add statements and then say where the data came from, to make references and qualify those statements. And the second bullet in this list is maybe the most important one that in terms of takeaways from the development team that worked on this project, that the data model is open-ended or all-purpose, and that is challenging in interesting ways. And I think Stephen and Mark will address this a bit when you aren't starting with a well-defined schema to begin with. It's not, it doesn't assume it's all Mark or all BibFrame. You start to get into some really interesting questions about how you are going to construct your data, what kind of statements can be made, and that that creates some very interesting uh, intellectual discussions, and that grew out of the this project. Going on to uh, some of the use cases that we had to to address in the project, one basic one was just how do you enter data? And here's a couple of screenshot snippets of the Wikibase user interface trying to meet the user more than halfway. If you're entering in a date or a, a death date statement, for example, or coordinates for where something is located, the system's built-in intelligence is able to take some of these strings and modify them or parse them so that they can, they can match. For example, a date can be associated with a calendar with a certain precision. Same with the uh, coordinates and can give you feedback on whether that data is accurate or not. Auto-suggest was mentioned by John as one of the things we wanted to, to have in the system, and it's just built into the system. In this case, a screenshot showing me typing in the name of a, a kind of a property. I want to associate some entity with a place, and I type in the word place, and it starts to show me all the different properties that have that term in it, so that's nice to have. Um, this is a snippet of a Sparkle query interface where I'm um, searching for an entity and just type in its name. Here's another one for, I'm sorry, this is the Sparkle interface where I'm just typing it in New York and it's prompting me all the entities with a description. So it's just there, none of this had to be built. That's great to get started with that. We wanted more complex queries to be uh, re handled as well. And this is a not very readable screenshot of the Sparkle query interface. The system comes with the ability to launch a triple store full of triples and a Sparkle query interface with a very nice query helper for constructing these sometimes complex requests. In this case, it's a query to look at our data and return the names of or entries for people who were born uh, between 1800 uh, after 1800 and do not have a death date prior to 1880. We're just looking for gaps in the data. Those were those are statements, death dates could, that could be investigated and filled in just to, as part of quality improvements in the data as by way of example, uh, one use of the query interface. Reconciliation is another important uh, use case. It was one of the two that, that John highlighted. It's when we came into the system, uh, this pilot and working with this system, we wanted to solve this problem or at least make an attempt at solving it with this new framework. We used OpenRefine, uh, the application OpenRefine might be familiar to some of you as a, as a starting point. If you give it a list of strings, you can point OpenRefine at various reconciliation endpoints of where it's going to send the strings and try to find matches. And on our side of the fence, we took some software that the um, Wikidata folks, so the community had developed as an OpenRefine endpoint that could sit on top of well, initially it was designed to sit on top of Wikidata, we applied it to our data so that we could try to match strings and against entities and get identifiers back. So we had some success with that and that uh, I think that's a promising path 
if uh, open refine turns out to be um, a reasonable starting point for the communities working with linked data. Batch loading, we loaded our pilot system with about 1.2 million entities. And we started looking at the overlap between Wikidata, WorldCat, VF, the virtual authority file, and FAST, the FAST vocabulary of uh, subject headings. So we were looking for overlaps because as John had mentioned, we've been contributing data to Wikidata for a while to try to see what that looked like, transform it in, in a way that could be loaded into the system. We used software called PyWikiBot to load the software into our database and then load it and create those entities and add statements in the Wikibase software. So there are other ways to approach this problem of getting data loaded into the system, uh, different than the approach we took. It's an evolving area, but the approach we took seemed to work pretty well for the scale of our project. There are lots of extensions you can make to this entity ecosystem, the software platform. This is one of them. You can write these little gadgets and plug them into the Wikibase UI. In this case, one of the statements you can make about an entity is, is there an image associated with this entity in Wikimedia Commons, a different uh, media wiki uh, resource? There's an, a snippet where there's, for Amelia Earhart, there are two different images. And that little, the arrow that is pointing to a little pop-up window, a gadget was written that would take that identifier and use the Wikimedia Commons API to get back a thumbnail image and the metadata from Wikimedia Commons. Simple to write, simple to add into the system, nicely extensible. Beyond that, beyond those little gadgets, there are just an, uh, a large number of tools that have been developed by the community, by folks who are working closely with the MediaWiki Foundation or just others in the community. Um, there's a tools directory, the, the URL will take you there, where you can search for different tools that have been written for different functions. We used one of the tools uh, that I mentioned earlier, the Open Refined Reconciliation Endpoint was written by the community. We had some tweaking to do to it, some configuration changes and extensions, but by and large, it was done. It was written for everyone to use, which is fantastic. It's a vibrant, active, creative community. But we made a couple of extensions of our own, and here's one of them. It's called the Explorer. John mentioned it. It's a way to use both the search capabilities of the MediaWiki platform and the Sparkle Query interface for looking at connections between entities to try and find your way through the data in a way that the Wikibase UI doesn't do, wasn't designed to do. So we took a different approach, more like for browsing, just following links through the system, following a link to a description of the Beatles and seeing the list of songs that they performed and finding a link to that song and reaching out to other resources for context like DBpedia for more contextual narrative descriptions. So that was an interesting experiment and easy, relatively easy to write uh, on top of this platform. Another one was the Retriever, which John also mentioned. As we were working with creating data in the system, you would be describing, let's say you're describing a book and you wanted to make a connection between that book and, the, and its author, but the author wasn't in the system yet. We wanted a way to go searching out uh, across other resources and pull that data in. So we set three targets, Wikidata, VF, and FAST, and use their APIs in this little search interface to go off and find matches, pull the data over, construct it in such a way that it would be compatible with Wikibase and then click a button and add the entity so it could go on with your work instead of having to pause and build it all from scratch. So that sped up the process of cataloging. I think it's a, a feature that will probably persist in any future version of this system that we, we work with. Um, and that's my rapid tour. There's more to say, but not much time to, to speak to it. So that was sort of the what. John covered some of the why. And now Stephen and and Mark will be talking more about the how, how they use the system, what kinds of questions were grappled with, and, and so forth. Thanks, Bruce. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Mark Beagie. I'm the geospatial metadata librarian here at Harvard. I was part of a cohort of about 10 information and technical services staff members at Harvard 
who participated in the partner pilot. And today I'm gonna to share some of those experiences that we had at Harvard on, on the pilot project. Uh, first, I wanted to um, talk a little bit about our motivations for participating in the pilot. Um, when we were approached by OCLC to participate, Harvard was already engaged um, with other institutions in the Linked Data for Libraries uh, projects, which some of you may have heard of. The LD for L projects are about exploring BibFrame and other ontology extensions for creating native uh, linked data descriptions of library resources. Um, so exploring Wikidata and Wikibase um, was kind of a natural complement to that work that we were doing. Um, we were really interested in exploring alternatives to, to Mark and BibFrame to describe entities and their relationships to library data. And um, as Bruce mentioned, uh, Wikidata is an increasingly important linked open data source and entity management ecosystem uh, with over 500 million entry entities growing super fast. Um, you know, it enables the possibility of integrating our library data with open web uh, data and kind of foster, foster resource exposure in that way. Um, you know, the library data seems to be somewhat underrepresented, uh, both in terms of bibliographic uh, works and their related entities. Um, and it's also a great community for making connection points with uh, domain experts. Um, so we really wanted to gain experience with metadata input, vocabularies, everything that kind of goes along with uh, the Wikidata structure and learn more about Wikidata, uh, Wikibase specifically as how it functions as a cataloging UI. Um, and we're also very excited to for the opportunity to participate um, in a shared learning environment that uh, OCLC um, put together. Um, and we're also very interested in kind of understanding and potentially influencing OCLC's direction for linked data use and creation. So there are a lot of, a lot of contributing factors for why we wanted to participate. Um, jumping to some of the successes, um, uh, from our perspective, and Bruce and John have already kind of introduced some of these aspects, so I won't go into detail, but um, the collaboration with partners and, o and OCLC went uh, very well. Uh, the Community Center as an online forum was uh, very active and useful uh, for asynchronous communication and kind of on uh, questions as they arose, and, and the office hours that were orchestrated by OCLC uh, doing live cataloging work through, through uh, work uh, through as kind of a group while being able to pose questions to the community was super uh, instructive and I think um, productive. Um, the community aspect I think we're learning from the LV for P is really the, uh, oh sorry, I'm one slide behind, thank you. Um, uh, the community aspect we learned from the LV for P's is kind of the largest part of this. Um, so the, the success of the community I think was, was um, a, a huge factor. Um, OCLC was super responsive uh, to community feedback and was able to introduce new properties um, essentially on the fly. I think there was one case where I was doing a live demo and OCLC added a property while I was still presenting. Um, it's somewhat harrowing experience if you've been involved with standard development, but also kind of liberating um, in a sense um, to be able to test things um, that quickly. And I think a lot of progress was also made on the tooling very quickly, including the retriever, which kind of helped to augment, um, you know, entity relationship building uh, in a much quicker way across across um, various data sources. And then the also the, the kind of the wiki the built in Wikimedia tools and gadgets, um, including a hierarchical class browse um, was helpful um, kind of from a catalogers um, input perspective. Uh, one thing that I haven't, I didn't, I neglected to put up here, which I should also thank, is um, OCLC was um, very good about um, documenting guidelines around entity type and resource format uh, documentations based on those community discussions. So able to kind of go back and refer back to uh, a body of documents uh, where some decisions were made about, you know, how we go about describing things. Um, the Sparkle endpoint was um, 
was necessary, I think, uh, especially starting out, a little sparkle goes a long way um, in that um, if you're able to learn a little bit, uh, you can kind of you can get a better view of the data and how certain properties and classes have been used, both um, kind of in, in this in the, in the project Wikibase, but also out on Wikidata, it, it serves you well. Um, uh, Retriever, uh, you know, was a game changer. Um, and then Explorer was great in that you could actually see the results of your work and what, what is kind of a prototype but user-facing uh, interface. And it was kind of gratifying to put, to put um, the back end together with the front end. Um, moving forward, um, some lessons that we learned. I think um, at Harvard, um, it was a largely positive experience. It's uh, very easy to use the Wikibase. Um, UI and connect theory with practice. Um, you know, we were able to explore various entity types and material types, but we only really had time to explore breadth of, of um, types over depth. Um, so we weren't able to get too much into the weeds on some of these things, but um, I think uh, the project kind of raised questions that um, are very important as we kind of explore this new way of describing uh, resources. Uh, we worked kind of with an internal study group, um, which was helpful, and it was it was just really easy to jump in and start creating. Um, uh, the production assistance tools and gadgets options are robust um, in Wikibase. Um, and I feel like we only really just begun to explore those kind of productivity helpers. Um, um, having a functional linked data entity description tool where properties could be proposed and experimented with, um, where you can make mistakes, I think was important as we learn. And since Wikidata kind of considers itself an emergent vocabulary, there's kind of a somewhat different approach from traditional library descriptive standards, uh, you know, Prescriptive and bounded usage of properties and classes are somewhat harder to control, I think, in a Wikidata environment. Um, it's involving vocabulary and classes are more difficult to keep track of. Um, so working directly in a functional ecosystem allowed the appropriate questions to emerge about the implications of working with this type of data, um, especially stuff that maybe we have, might have less community control over. Um, uh, you know, one, one thing that definitely came up a lot was the, the need for kind of a better understanding of property definitions and the constraints on properties, kind of need the need for community decisions and documentation uh, with examples um, around those uh, properties. And then as we explore uh, descriptions and kind of an entity relationship uh, creation environment, um, knowing when to say when uh, is, is, can be uh, um, a challenge. Um, in MARC, we kind of have a sense of when a description is finished. You can read it typically if you're a cataloger. Um, and with entity relationships, it's a little more difficult to make that evaluation. I, an example is a, is a map that I was describing. Uh, there are insets. And there was an in, inset and an illustration on a, of a historic monument. Um, uh, data um, that might normally be found in a mark note in a you know current cataloging environment necessitates entity creation and relationship assertions in a Wikidata environment. And there's more things you know if there's more things to say about the related entities, kind of the rabbit hole can deepen quickly um, as you're making more and more relationships. So the Wikidata model is great in that it allows these you know more relationships. Um, uh, that you can assert um, and the fl flexibility is great for special collections and materials um, but establishing communal best practices around these um, important relate entity relationship uh, dynamics will be helpful too going forward um, thinking about some specific use cases at harvard i'd say we're just beginning to think about the implications and uses of wikidata and wikibase um, in a library environment, uh, but a few ideas that we had thought about was um, the connection between Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons, and Wikipedia brings library data a one step closer, kind of to broader web exposure and uh, resource discovery and reuse. Um, their standards of notability or literary warrant uh, that we that might prevent us from contributing certain types of data to other traditional sources. 
so can Wikidata or Wikibase, like uh, a local Wikibase, be a tool for managing these kind of traditional local authorities? I'm going to look at one example of that in just a second. Um, uh, and, you know, and kind of related entities or concepts that may not be well represented in library vocabularies. This might be a good home for those types of things. And then kind of finally, are there areas where we can use a Wikibase to get contributions from non-library domain experts that will help us to enhance our collection description? So areas where catalogers might not endeavor to describe um, our own material. Um, so here's an example of kind of a local authority use case um, that I had kind of mentioned earlier. When Harvard migrated to Alma, uh, we lost some of our homegrown authorities for uh, local Harvard-related um, organ uh, organization um, authorities. So a wiki-based-like project like this, um, it could be an effective home for managing this type of authority data. Here we have an entity description for the Harvard Library Club, which was responsible for issuing some resources uh, that we have. Um, and here in the description, you can see uh, transferred some of the MARC authority data um, in the entity description. You'll notice that the, found, the founding of the club is uh, attributed to Jesse uh, Whitehead. Um, and the, the, the this, the Wikidata model allows for us to make a founded by assertion on this uh, description. Uh, you would see that further down this description. I didn't screen capture that, unfortunately. But in order to make a founded by assertion, of course, we need to create an entity for Jesse Whitehead. Um, and so here, here's a, here is the entity that we created for Jesse Whitehead. Um, we can make various assertions about her relationships, including the fact that she's the daughter of Alfred North Whitehead, a famous Harvard mathematician and philosopher. Um, and we've made a note that she's a librarian and she's employed by Harvard. You know, data points that might only have really be of interest um, to our um, collection. However, kind of looking at the already existing Alfred North Whitehead uh, Wikidata entry uh, for her father, uh, we can see that she is not asserted as one of his children, although her brother is there. Um, so through an entity management system, uh, like the, the project uh, Wikibase, an entity that is kind of a local interest here at Harvard can be contributed to existing open web data, enriching relationships in both Wikidata and the library club uh, catalog. Uh, this is pretty a uh, pretty simplistic example, but I think it highlights how thinking differently about the entities in our collections, you know, and instead of records can kind of transform our cataloging work. Um, and then finally, um, I will say that kind of going forward, um, Harvard will continue to explore linked data uh, for metadata production. Um, we'll uh, lead initiatives for shared identifiers and identity management. Uh, Harvard Library has a reputation for going it alone sometimes, and we know that's unsus unsustainable in current environments, uh, and we need to foreground our collaboration with new and existing partners to get things done at scale. Um, and we'll continue those collaborations with, uh, with OCLC, with the LD for uh, library, uh, Link Data for Libraries projects and other partners to create workflows um, that aspire to accomplish uh, those goals. So um, that's what I had to share today. Great. So we're turning things over to Stephen Hearn from Minnesota. Go ahead, Stephen. Yep. <clears throat> and there we go. So University of Minnesota Libraries, where I work, uh, has not been as uh, involved with linked data development as uh, Harvard was, uh, and we've been feeling that. So when this opportunity came along to get involved with a hands-on uh, linked data project, we were we were eager to participate. Um, we've been following linked data, and there have been some individuals here who've done some work on projects, but we hadn't done anything at this scale. So this was this was a golden opportunity for us. And I would agree with everything that uh, Mark just said, 
in terms of the experience, uh, passage system was relatively easy to adapt to, and it was improved as we as we spoke and watched. Uh, it was a really rewarding experience to be interacting with um, developers, and not just developers, but developers who understood that the the people doing the description have goals for this metadata. <laughs> it's not just about making the computer operate efficiently. It's about making it operate efficiently and produce desired results. And that was really gratifying to be able to work in that kind of environment. Um, in terms of what we especially liked, um, Passage encourages us to think about entities and relationships. It's not just about taking the object that will be on a shelf or, or be on your server and putting a bunch of hooks into it. It's about thinking about the entities that it relates to, how they can be described and made into web entities, uh, and then connected to other things and other resources which we have to offer. Uh, so the expansion of the, the focus to include a number of first class entities as objects of description was uh, something I, I can say personally, I really appreciated, uh, and, and I think it's a it's one of the big pluses for for moving toward linked data is this different conceptualization of the world as a a complex and diverse set of entities with many interesting relationships among them. Um, the fact that there are so many, I can see in some of the chat that there's discussion already about what about all these other things that are already out there in the web. Uh, that was really important and being able to draw on web sources like Wikidata to support some of this entity description, being able to quickly and easily pull in metadata from uh, Wikidata uh, and other places to, to you know, build uh, you know, the skeleton, if not the, the flesh and bone of, uh, of our descriptions of the entities we wanted to connect to the resources we were trying to describe. That was really nice. And, and it, helped to break down the mental you know, walls around the uh, activity of cataloging and to see that we are in, in a larger uh, community that's doing this kind of work, not just in libraries. Um, <clears throat> and the ability to you know, see and act on the connections among entities, that was really valuable. I would agree with uh, Mark that it raises all kinds of questions as to uh, how many connections to make. And also, in addition to just connections among data entities, being able to connect with people, the, the way the project was run, where we would have regular sessions talking with developers at OCLC and with colleagues at other institutions, that was uh, really stimulating and, and rewarding. So, so that kind of connection was very valuable out of the project. Um, I'm going to leave most of the technical discussion to, to other people. Uh, I think it's been well handled and covered. Uh, to me, the more pressing questions have to do with sort of the, the conceptualization of passage as a, as a way forward, um, because there, there are a lot of open questions, as, as Mark and Bruce have alluded to, and John. Um, you know, granularity is one of them that came up quickly. If, if I'm describing a digitization of a map, in a context like Passage, is the owner of our copy that was digitized of that map significant metadata for the entity as it's going into a, a common place? Typically, Wiki is has been more concerned with what in Ferber terms would be, you know, expression level or work level kind of metadata, and we have to determine, you know, is Passage going to be meant to capture very granular data about the particular object that has a digital representation or that is being described as a physical representation given a digital avatar in our description. You know, that, I think that, that's something we need to, to think carefully about. And as, as Mark said, it's, it's really <laughs> kind of unbounded and it was both refreshing and a little terrifying to have no sense of what the, the conventions and the consensus was around you know, where the lines are, where, the, where the, the limits are on what we should do. At the opposite end, there's the scalability question. If this becomes not just a, a lively project of you know, a handful of institutions, but something that's meant to operate at scale, 
you know, many, many, many institutions and potentially many kinds of communities contributing. Is is that all going to work? The wiki systems work, but is is are there differences here in terms of the purposes that the institutions would be applying this for that would make problems for the scalability of uh, this kind of uh, tool? Another concern we've had, or I've had, is insofar as we're looking for ways to make uh, library data more evident on the web, more uh, readily uh, accessible on the web, uh, is that something that we need to be thinking about in terms of metadata and in terms of, of other factors? I, as, as Bruce and John were pointing out, OCLC has been putting library link data on the web for some time now. And if we're not seeing it, maybe it's not because we haven't been putting out linked data. Maybe it's because there are complexities to getting um, you know, high relevance ranking that are not going to be satisfied by just turning to a new data format. So, so we need to be thinking about how we actually make this achieve our goal. If the goal really is to get library services, the abilities of libraries to offer information and, and um, objects on the web, if that's our goal, we need to be thinking about more than just linked data. Um, and then there's the question of what our place is going to be in a larger, uh, lar more larger scoped metadata ecosystem. I mean, we, currently we, we have our kind of own little community with, with various kinds of barriers, but increasingly we are aware that we need to be able to borrow from other kinds of identity registries to bring in the necessary identification of persons and corporate bodies and, and topical subjects and, and material types and all of this kind of stuff. We really need to be able to do that. We do that somewhat now with authority control where we can cite a source for a term. But what we really want is to be able to offer users the ability to navigate and find out about the concepts and the persons and the bodies and so forth, and then come back to our resources enriched by that knowledge. And this may imply that we're going to be, you know, turning over some of this kind of work to other communities, other entities, other institutions, and then taking from them. And it may also imply that in some cases we're going to be involving ourselves and doing work, uh, collaborative work in some of those other systems. And that I think could be a really interesting thing. Libraries are already looking into how they can contribute to the wiki community. And I think, and ISNI is another project ongoing. So I think we're going to see more and more of that. And we need to be thinking about what our role is in that larger system of metadata management. And then getting back into the using of the records, how do you navigate um, all these defined relationships? And, and are constraints going to be an issue? Uh, I agree with Mark that it's, it's a tricky question to uh, decide whether you want to use more constrained, more precisely defined kinds of predicates in your linked data, uh, classes for the entities that you're describing. If, if you do that, the computing power that, that is latent in all of this is increased because it can actually make you know, inferences about whether this thing fits that predicate. But that involves a level of, of training and sort of intellectual discipline, which may be more than we can expect of what we would like to be a larger community contributing to this work, a larger, broader uh, pool of, of expertise all contributing. So in the end, I think my question is, what is the user community for a thing like Passage? Is it, is it for catalogers? Is it for libraries? Is it for the GLAM community broadly, uh, the museum people? The, gallery people? Is it for expert communities? Is it for uh, the wiki community, the, the really broad community? Are they meant to be operating in a thing like Passage? Is it just one other wiki place they could be? And that's, that's a really interesting question that raises all kinds of issues around autonomy and role that I think libraries need to be asking as this kind of work. And I don't think Passage is going to be the only one, and I, but I think it has been a very illustrative one we'll be raising. Um, as far as what we're going to do at Minnesota, uh, we're going to continue to be looking for opportunities to work with linked data. Our, our system, ALMA, has been doing some development in 
the generation of linked data and, and, and publishing of linked data um, based on our library met metadata. And we would like to be more uh, actively involved in that. Uh, we, we get to be part of the LD4L cohort that's been enlarged recently with new grant money. Um, so we're looking forward to that. We plan to contribute to best practices to be involved in uh, PCC committees and, and task groups uh, dealing with linked data. We do see this as a really important direction that library metadata is going. And we will be advocating, as people who've seen my name on the web know I'm out there advocating, for more integration of library services into a web environment and the integration of web-based entity management services into library metadata, which I think is the real promise of the linked data uh, work in stuff like projects. Okay, great. So we're turning things over to John Chapman to, to wrap things up. Great. And um, I'm seeing the good questions coming in on chat. So I'm going to try to wrap this up fairly quickly so we can address some of those. Um, so just first off, I want to talk about how this project's been interesting to get, you know, talk about a forest and forest and the trees metaphor. So getting um, from looking at individual records to being able to look across a large database, um, not just mark data, but authority data, seeing some patterns. Um, the thing that came to mind here was, you know, periodically popping up in the fire lookout tower and getting a lay of the land. But really, this project moved so fast, I think the better metaphor was something like orienteering, where you have to. Um, look at a map and make a quick decision and run to a point and figure out if you're roughly in the right area. Um, in orienteering, you have the notion of backstops, which are features on the landscape that tell you that you went too far. And you also have the concept in orienteering of handrails, which are features like a stream or a path that you know uh, you want to stay on one side of. So that felt like an apt metaphor for how we guided some of the, some of the decisions around um, notability, how much description to do that Mark was talking about and Stephen alluded to. So um, we also wanted to think about, um, you know, how, how, how much work is too much work, um, how, how complete is the description, that sort of thing, which does interact a little bit with the constraints uh, question that came in on chat, uh, was a very interesting question that came up. Uh, and we also just took note and um, talked a little bit around the idea of the indexing of the data, uh, where that indexing occurs, where one goes to find it, where it's stored, all that has some big implications for a system design as well. Um, in terms of our lessons learned for the project, um, you know, at OCLC, we believe that the mixed mark, bib frame, bib frame plus, Wikidata, environment's going to continue for a long time. So we need to leverage what OCLC has in terms of scale and structure uh, to focus on really high quality entity descriptions and act as an infrastructure provider for those description and those identifiers. Along the way, we recognize that, you know, all signs point to needing to deal with even more heterogeneous metadata than is out there in the community now. Um, and we also are well aware that we're going to need to build services to allow for, you know, both third party um, applications and for library built applications to interact with this data, uh, as well as providing end user applications uh, from my group or others. And the purpose of this really is to not remain on that island. It's really to, to get discovered. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the questions that Stephen was asking about discoverability, um, how the stuff's found on the web, what we can do differently to improve that behavior. That's very much in the forefront, uh, forefront of our mind as we move forward on this. And then what's next for us? Um, we're in active design and architecture phases right now. I mean, even before the pilot ended, um, we saw that there was a lot here that we could, could build on. So we're, we engaged with our technical and development teams right away. Uh, we have milestones this fall in terms of design and architecture. Um, 
I can't announce details at this time, but our initial priorities are around building out that so-called entity ecosystem um, and then also the services for working with that data directly. And then we expect to continue to work and iterate on the interface design. We saw some really good examples of creative interfaces uh, today that um, they showed and Mark showed that we uh, worked on with the with the help from the from the uh, participants in this project. So that's where we see things going. That was a whirlwind tour. Um, I want to leave time for questions. Um, so I'm going to hand it over, I think, to Merrily to um, facilitate that. Thank you, John. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've got some great questions. Um, we have about eight minutes left. Uh, Bruce uh, thought he could um, answer some of the questions about um, uh, uh, constraints and duplicates, um, et cetera, through doing a little live demo, and I'm grateful that he's uh, brave enough to do that. Um, so Bruce, why don't you uh, do that? We also had a question from um, about kind of the overall uh, where where are the edges between uh, um, you know a, an open system like like Wikidata versus uh, kind of a library specific domain um, question. Stephen reflected on some of that in his remarks, but um, if we have some time, maybe others could also uh, reflect on that. I think that we're my my own observation is that we're just in a um, we're in an era of a lot of experimentation with the um, LD4 projects. Um, and uh, others in the GLAM space, I think, exploring uh, use of, of Wikibase. Uh, so I think we're, we're th it's a really good time to be asking those questions, but um, maybe not uh, clear answers as yet. I don't have clear answers. Um, maybe somebody else on the call does. Bruce, do you want to just give a little demonstration that might help to answer Mark, Mark Custer's question? Sure, um, and hopefully this will if it doesn't completely answer it, it just kind of suggests the path we might go forward with. Also, I wanted to mention that um, this pilot project, we call it Project Passage. So if you've heard references to Passage, that's, that's where that's coming from, just a temporary name for it. And um, to illustrate how constraints might work in a system like this, I thought I'd do a, uh, do a quick search here for the Jane Austen novel Persuasion. Uh, in that screenshot that uh, Mark noted, the uh, it showed a constraint violation report. I talked about those little gadgets that can be written. This is one that uh, my colleague Jeff Young wrote to view. To, you can click on this link, and it'll show you if there were some mismatches between the statements associated with this novel, author, instance, genre, et cetera, and what what values were there and what expected values were there. And this is making uh, a call out to the, the system, sort of the, the properties, all the statements have these properties like author, et cetera, to see what property constraints they might have. In this case, there aren't any violations. It looks fine, but it would, it's something that you could sort of do on the fly. Uh, you could check to see whether the entity description you're providing makes sense from the system's point of view. Well, where do these constraints get defined? Here's the author property and all of its associated statements, and it has within it a set of property constraints. And the value type constraint says, um, this is associated with people or pseudonyms or organizations or groups of humans. Those are the kinds of classes of things that could be authors and would be associated with a book or a text or a book series. So this is just an initial set of these kinds of constraints, but it gives some shape to the data. Even though you can violate these property constraints at will in the system, it doesn't prevent you from adding in uh, statements that are in conflict with these, uh, these constraints. The setting them in the system, setting the property constraints inside the system does give you the ability then to check on the fly for those violations or to run Sparkle queries across all the data and look for mismatches and do quality assurance that way. There is, we mentioned also these various extensions that are made to the Wikibase platform. This is one that we looked at, but unfortunately didn't get a chance to actually apply in our pilot before the pilot ended. And this was a, 
a set of three different related extensions. One uses the constraints in the data to produce reports. And you can imagine this being uh, this extension being folded into additional tools, perhaps a more guided or interactive version of a user interface for editing where it might suggest to you which properties make sense or what kinds of classes make sense for the kinds of entities you're describing. Um, so anyway, it's a way to give some shape and control of the data, even though it isn't active, active, live, and enforced inside the system. It's a remedy for some of those issues so you can define what your world looks like. So that's uh, hopefully responding to the constraints question, if I understood the question correctly. Uh, I think so. Um, ben Virchbau asks, will these excellent extensions be shared with the larger community? Well, all the ones that we used uh, from the wiki Media Wiki, Wiki Data, Wiki-based community are already shared. There's a I'm, there's a link in the presentation to the ToolForge site where you can search across all of those extensions that were made have been made and made available for, for the most part, for interacting with Wiki Data, but for other Media Wiki products as well, there's resources as well. So those are just openly available. The ones that we developed, the Retriever and the um, Right, the Retriever and the Explorer aren't shared yet. Uh, they're, they're, I think we need an application <clears throat> like this project for the Retriever to be to make sense to share it. You wouldn't use the Retriever to probably to add data into, say, Wikidata. Otherwise, we release it as a Wikibase Media Wiki extension because its primary target for getting data is Wikidata itself. So it's a little, uh, not quite circular. recursive, but yeah, circular. Yeah, so so that one probably doesn't make sense unless there's a kind of a federated separate Wikibase instance that it could be applied to like in our project. The Explorer I think has some, some value too, but there's a, uh, let's see if I can get to this really quickly in Wikidata. There's a very similar application that's part of the, the set of extensions that's called the Reasonator, and that you can let's see for Jane Austen here, and she is. So I'm searching in Wikidata. It's nice. It's got a six birthday link <laughs> icon. That's nice. Um, well, I'm sorry, not calling it up on the fly here, but there's a version where you can look at data about Jane Austen where. Um, it's a more presentable view. Let's see if I can just search for it. Here. Yeah, here we go. The Reasonator tool. And its view of the Wikidata entity for Barack Obama is doing similar things to what our Explorer did, where it's going, making, say, Sparkle queries against Wikidata, going off to other external resources that, in the, to other Wikipedias to get additional kind of narrative description back and links. So that, that's an extension that I suppose anyone could try to pick up and use. It makes more sense, I think, in the Wikidata Wikipedia context and why we didn't use it in, in our instance where we ended up writing one of our own. We had slightly different intentions, I guess you'd have to say, for what we wanted to, to experiment with, with exploration, exploring our data. If, again, if we had a, a future federated instance of Wikibase, it might make sense to try to package up that extension and, and make it available to others to, to try as well. And I think, uh, Ben, is I think we do see um, other, other uh, wiki-based projects emerging. So uh, in the greater world of wiki-based tools, I think that that would be, I think Ben is suggesting that that would be a nice contribution. Um, yeah. We are okay. unfortunately out of time, but I think that the uh, the philosophical questions will continue. Uh, what is the role of library data in um, federated and non-federated uh, wiki, wiki-based states? Um, I want to thank all of our uh, uh, presenters today for their um, great uh, uh, comments for working so well as a team. It was a delight to work with uh, a group of presenters who had already been working um, as a team together. Uh, this session has been recorded. We'll be sharing it out 
um, both to you, the attendees, and also putting it on our website for everybody to enjoy. Um, and uh, thank you so much for your time and attention, and this concludes today's webinar.